there we see editor. So this is an example of a script that will actually work if exercises which probably don't use VASP in the beginning ask would that be possible until that is uh, yeah. set up for everybody yeah the first exercise uses EMT okay. uh, and then then there will be some other exercises that use GPO mm -hmm. but GPO won't run so just now we managed to get it to work with uh, with VASP mm -hmm. so um, that's kind of the most similar code so uh, some of them can be can work with VASP Okay, great. Why is it? Because I don't normally use that. Then let's uh, maybe start with the first one, which uses the EMT calculator, and see that everybody gets that running also. It's our first hands-on session today, so there might be still some technical difficulties. I'll try to look around and see if somebody has issues with the, with the image or the, the X2Go connection. Okay, um, maybe you can start with the first exercise. Um, yeah, so it was uh, getting started. Um, I will. Did I post a link? Yes. So in the chat of this, there is a link to the getting started .html. And the first one is called nitrogen on copper. And um, And I suppose everybody can just do that. And then you know, under the getting started, there is another one. I suppose I can continue sharing. So there is another one called atoms and calculators. And in that one, it uses GPOL. But uh, then, I, uh, if you replace GPOW with EMT, it will also work. It just, instead of GPOW and all of these, then it should just be, you need to import EMT and then create it like in the other exercise. And that will actually work. But since EMT isn't actually four molecules like N2, it would be more correct to use VASP. And um, so that is where this script uh, would will be relevant, it, it performs a basic VASP calculation. So it could serve as an example quite possibly. Didier, how can the people who are participating from abroad access the cluster? How did they get their access credentials? who are not here on site because we have a question like this in the chat. Jan is not here, yeah. Okay, yeah. few moments we will send an email Providing the credentials, yeah. So you will username and this one. For the people who are participating from abroad, we will provide the uh, password for logging into the cluster via email in a few minutes to answer to the question in the chat of uh, Kizung Kang. But they already have some details about uh, uh, which was providing on, uh, I think, Friday. 
There's also a PDF file in the own cloud link which was sent around uh, just recently where there is uh, all the links and all the... It will be on Friday afternoon session. On, on the Friday afternoon that Jan uploaded where you can also see the servers and the SSH connections, how to log in by x to go. But your credentials you will receive via email. Now I'll have a look around, uh, ask if there's some issues and technicalities, and I'll come back later, okay? Yeah, I expect everybody needs to uh, link this um, directory in this yeah. particular way and set the environment variable. That so really that will... But I think now it's more just the first hand-on session, I guess it's now more of a problem of logging in and getting the very first EMT tutorial running. Yeah. I'll be back with you. Thank you, Laurent, for the link. So for the people abroad, there is another link in the in the discussion of how to log into the cluster. And I'm, I just thought that some people already started on the exercises here. So some have troubles connecting and some already started. So continue okay. looking around here.
be nice if you could. So I think people got think more or less locked in. Yeah, many are set up already. Yeah. So maybe you could uh, now share it and go whatever, take, take one yeah. example and go step by step and discuss it. We have yeah. to wait for about five minutes or so because uh, the online participants. Yeah, but uh, we don't have time. Okay. So uh, if you could uh, then uh, go ahead and share the screen and it would be great. Okay, so this is the first of the exercises. So we are we we went to the AC web page, getting started. And okay, so there are some really basic what is Python um, examples. So uh, you're free to rummage around, um, um, but in principle, I suppose one could start with this one. Um, um, so here we calculate the adsorption energy of a nitrogen molecule on a copper surface by calculating the total energy for the isolated slab and then for the isolated molecule. Um, so there is already a script prepared and then um, um, there are these different, you can execute it in the, in the um, 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 in the interactive interpreter. So if we have a look at this script, so we import some things. Ask, can you make the font a little bit bigger? Otherwise, it's really hard to see on the beamer here for the people in the last row. Um, right, right. Uh, what is the shortcut for that in Emacs in graphical mode? Uh, that's an excellent <laughs> Um I mean, I can open it in uh, text mode and then make it big. That's better. Finally, we want to adsorb the 
um, uh, the molecule onto the slab. So there is this um, function called add adsorb it, uh, which has some magical names. So it knows where on this particular atom subject that was generated by the FCC 111. Well, one of them is called on top, and it can add the uh, molecule there. And so it uh, adds to the slab the molecule at a height of H, which is 1.85 angstroms uh, uh, over the topmost atom in the high symmetry location named on top. Of course, one needs to look up in the documentation to know this magical name. Um, um, then we set a cons we, we define a constraint which fixes um, uh, all of the atoms whose chemical symbols are not n. So all of the copper is fixed. Then we set that constraint uh, on the slab and we um, create an optimizer, uh, which we then run. So it's a little bit more complicated than the example we saw previously. We are doing three different calculations in one script, and then we are combining the energies. We are taking the energy of the slab plus the energy of the molecule minus the um, uh, modified slab. So this is the system which has both the slab and the molecule in it. Um, so that will have energy contrib contributions from both and the fact that they are now bonded together. So uh, this will be the absorption energy. So oh, let's run it. And the optimization com completed here. What the optimization actually did was to uh, so we we put sorry uh, we put the um, uh, the adsorbent at an arbitrary height over the surface and we don't know whether that is the correct height so therefore we had to relax the um, structure um, uh, to see um, to find the optimal bond length which uh, then. Um, we use to evaluate the actual absorption energy. And so the absorption energy was 0.3 EV. I don't know how accurate that is, but in principle it is garbage because we were using the, um, the EMG potential with um, something that wasn't an FCC metal. So if you want an actual realistic calculation, you would need to replace this with a calculator that can handle um, uh, the uh, uh, molecule correctly. Um, but now we are just playing around, so this will do just fine. Then there is an explanation of the of these things. Uh, it's basically the same set of steps, but in the interactive interpreter. If we wanted to do all of that, we could by just typing it in and see, seeing what happens. So from is atoms the one molecule with atoms and so on um, I'm not going to do all of that but uh, um, if you want you can you can type it and play around a little bit um, uh, there are many nice things about the interactive interpreter for example it can auto complete oops it can auto complete if you press the tab button then you can see all of the things that this um, uh, all of the methods and attributes that the atoms have and play around with that um, but really it is just a question of, of doing what it says here um, so is this good is everybody able to follow and I see a couple of thumbs up in the audience, so it seems it's working mm -hmm. for the people here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, ask, so uh, ask, can I shortly? So, but I th so it's important now that we that it works that most of you could log in. If somebody has a problem, we still have an afternoon. Uh, you tell tell me, you, okay? If 
you have a serious problem to log in because this ASE will be used later on for other hands-on courses. And uh, maybe uh, ask, which you could do would be nice not to go into the these special features of ASE right now, but what would be good if you could now go and show, maybe in IPython or wherever, uh, the different possibilities uh, of ASE to create an atoms object. Because there are many ways of doing it. And uh, this is the basic thing which we'll then use for, uh, for the hands-on course on multiple scattering uh, end of the week. Um, okay. Just you could give this overview and uh, that people see how there are different ways how to do the structures and modify them uh, so the atoms and this object itself right um, so uh, in that case uh, well if we want to actually do exercises then there are some exercises that involve manipulating atoms for example um, um, or I can also just play around and type things and we see what happens, but then it's not really an exercise. So what is best? <laughs> yeah, it's better that people do exercise by themselves following these uh, hands-on courses, but uh, maybe you could give uh, indeed a short five minutes uh, tutorial on the different options how to create uh, the structures, as I said. Because you have this, uh, you know, you have this bulk option. Yeah. Some, uh, then you have some, uh, some. I, I don't remember how they are called. Some uh, perovskite factory, <laughs> or uh, surface factories, or whatever. That uh, that could be interesting yeah. also to see. And the people can meanwhile also look then to the exercises as well. But this yeah. would be great uh, to if you show it because it's. Uh, uh, very helpful and your expertise on that it's very helpful the other following exercises I will then do with the people they if there are questions these are most of the things I can answer but if something yeah okay so um, the first thing that we can look at is uh, is the bulk function Builds all kinds of bulk structures, but most importantly, it um, it can build the reference structures for each element, which are useful um, 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 for well, I suppose any purpose. So we can ask for bulk iron, and it will be it will have as it will be a. a um, um, a single iron atom in some kind of cell, which we can uh, take if we want that this is actually a BCC that is, uh, and we can of course um, view it in the GUI as well. Um, in And so the bulk function knows all of the reference states of the elements, at least those that are not infinitely complex. We can also do gold and titanium and so on. It also takes quite a few parameters one can set in order to modify exactly how it is created. So we can ask for bulk um, gold, We can try to ask for um, gold in BCC, which is not the right structure. So then it will raise an er element, uh, an error, because it doesn't know for this element which lattice constant it uh, should use. So one could write some, and, um, and then it will do the job. So um, uh, this is very handy for the basic structures. Uh, then if you need something that is not quite a basic structure, you can, um, uh, let's create this one, even though it's not very physically correct. Um, then it has periodic boundary con uh, conditions. This is one thing that the atoms have. Uh, in this case, it is uh, periodic in all three directions. The other thing that it has is the cell. 
then it has the positions, but that is not so interesting because there is only one atom, so it just sits at zero. Nevertheless, if we want, we can edit these um, 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 attributes. So we can say atoms.positions uh, 0, comma 1. So now we are indexing this NumPy array, and we are setting the value to 0.1. Now we move one of the atoms, and um, um, well, we move the atom a little bit in the y direction. Um, so basically, all of these can be changed like that. So we in in the cell, we can also um, um, uh, we can take the set vector the last of the set of, of the cell vectors and we can multiply it by 1.1 then we have um, um, and then we have changed the cells so it is slightly elongated in one direction um, so these are common tasks if you want to if you want to do any kind of systematic modification you just do it like this via scripting you just edit or add or multiply numbers and, and, and get the job done that way. Um, so um, most of these things are NumPy arrays. Um, so um, this means you can do a lot of fancy things, like you can ask for, the, you can, um, uh, the positions are just an array, but you can slice it like this. These are the first two elements, for example. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is, it is a multidimensional array, and the first dimension is, is only one long, because there is only one atom. Uh, so this is the entire array. Uh, if we want, we can take only one element along one of the... Um, um, directions well this is how numpy slicing works now i'm not completely sure uh, this was not quite what i had uh, expected to be doing so uh, uh, no no but we are flexible always you know <laughs> no no thanks so just let me comment this so uh, the that would be really thing which you 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 should then look to it uh, uh, now or then later on i mean you will have access now all the time so we can then maybe afternoon or whenever you like go into it and try it because these are things which are then uh, very often used uh, also then in this uh, these hands-on courses later on so uh, when we create a structure <laughs> typically you know let so let, let me remind you what you saw last week in the lectures so we you saw in the lectures multiple scattering we saw for example a real space multiple scattering so we will have it also today afternoon the lecture on it so you create a bulk system, and out of this you, you want to cut a cluster on which you do the, your calculation. And that's a kind of uh, workflow which you will use, for example, for MS spec that you have, will have to create a structure. Typically, you start with something simple like this bulk level gold, and you cut some cluster, and then you do the multiple scattering uh, calculation on, on that. So that's why, it's, uh, that's why I was wanted to ask uh, I ask ask to to to, to give you the, the to see how how it creates. So uh, I suggest now you have let's let's make five minutes. You try it, uh, look it, and uh, bit modify the object of the atoms by yourself. And if there are some questions, uh, then just let me know, and I can and I try to help you. And uh, uh, and. Uh, Ask and also maybe you could do also one more uh, example uh, showing the alternative way of creating the structures you have. Yeah. And then, then so, uh, people can then try it in. Uh, so let's try also to uh, to build a surface. So um, these are not enormously advanced tools. These are just the standard surfaces that everybody needs all the time. So they're not so general, but um, uh, we can import the. Uh, uh, FCC 111, for example, that one generates an FCC 111 surface. And we can um, try to generate such a surface, and it will also know the basic things like the lattice constant of gold FCC. 
I think it needs more information. It says it needs the size. The size is uh, how big the uh, surface should be in each direction. And the surface is already is always um, uh, goes along x and y. So the normal vector is set. So it's, if we say we want three times four times eight, for example, then we get uh, this is in the set direction. Now we have a very tall kind of surface. So it repeats in these two directions where it draws the lattice vectors. And this was basically what we were doing in the other exercise. We were creating this, and then we were adding, using a shortcut function, a, um, an atom. And I showed previously how you can also do it interactively in the GUI. Um, and of course, one can just manipulate all these uh, arrays and uh, to add things and modify them as well. Um, um, but I suppose mostly it's it's practical to use these um, uh, functions for building things. It's also possible if we um, if we put a molecule uh, like this, uh, it's possible to add one atom object to another. Now atoms will actually be, um, it will have both hydrogen and gold and uh, oxygen now because we added an H2O to gold. So if we view it, we should be able to see them and they will just have been added in, in 0, 0, so this is a little bit unphysical. Um, Another, um, so there, there are several of these surface builder functions. There is also a significantly more general one. Um, documentation is always nice. Um, so these are the common surfaces. It also mentions here that in order to work with these surfaces, um, when we build it, it actually tags each atom. So each atom can have a tag, and this number indicates where in the um, uh, which layer it belongs to. So those in the bottom layer will probably be either eight or zero. Um, um, and this can be handy for selecting atoms. So let's say that we. Um, um, uh, we want to displace some of the atoms. We can do fancy array operations such as um, let's, let's, let's. these are the tags. This is a mask of where the tag is 8. So it's a lot of Boolean values. And we can index the atoms or the positions of the atoms with such a, a Boolean mask. This means these are the positions only of those atoms that had tag equals eight. So that's significantly fewer than all of them. Um, and those positions we can then modify. Uh, let's set them to zero, that's easy to recognize. Uh, so now, if these are all of the positions and we just set a lot of them to zero by doing this assign by assigning into this mask. Um, so the array slicing operations are very handy to help with um, uh, building things. Uh, there is also um, um, Uh, there is also a more general function. Um, 
general surface. And so this is another nice thing about Python. Everything, there is this help function that you can call on basically anything. And then it shows the documentation. Sometimes it's not really the best part of the documentation, but in many cases it provides a lot of useful help. So um, uh, this general surface is a module and it has a, a, a function called surface. And there we can actually specify a lattice. So it is more general. You can specify a lattice, which is an atoms object, for example, a primitive cell and then some Miller indices, and then it uses that to generate the, um, uh, the surface. So we could try doing that. Uh, so from uh, so let's build up, let's have a primitive cell first. So we say from ASE to build, uh, we already have bulk Let's take bulk titanium, for example. This is a primitive cell. So that is an HCP, is it? Um, hmm, I guess we should, um, I'm sorry, I think I will do it for a FCC actually. It's a bit simpler. So um, let's build surface out of that. So uh, I cannot see the help at the same time as I run the commands. So I just have to move it around a little bit. So as it build, you know, uh, then we give it the Miller indices. That and then how many layers we want. Um, and this returns an atoms object. Um, we already have view imported. Now we can open this one. And I think actually, hmm, we can. this so we can see that it looks like an FCC, even if it looked a little bit weird in the beginning. So this can be used to generate um, um, uh, surfaces with other Miller indices. So a 100 should be this. Those are the most useful ones for everyday work. If you want something more general, there is also the crystal function, as I mentioned, and there is uh, there is a, um, a system for generating more gen general Bravé lattices, uh, but it's a little bit more involved. So I would expect um, maybe you don't need that. Uh, would you like to go on with? Should we try to get people to write some? Um, um, some actual scripts. Yeah, maybe you can give them some some homework. <laughs> that would be maybe great. So, I, I suggest that people now just try it, and then if you have questions, you either ask me or you come down and ask uh, ask uh, for a question here, some special one, and uh, maybe ask and give you some homework to do based on this. As I said, more connected to the structures. And uh, to and then, uh, well, 
then uh, we can then uh, look to this together tomorrow so, or something like this if you if you don't mind somebody uh, like certainly that. so if you yeah so let i think let's give people five or two ten minutes to try it and uh, i will run around and if somebody has question i will come to you yeah. and then we so, try this uh, homework to <laughs> to set yeah. up <laughs> but i mean the, the standard homework would be to take the um the first of the um of the uh, exercises and just do those yeah surely surely okay and um uh, but you expressed a preference for building structures, so there are some tutorials around as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to have to to look through and see if there is something that seems particularly useful. Um, um, uh, but my first expectation was to just do them in do the getting started exercises. Yeah, sure. source and was using this tool and uh, combination with MSPEC to, to do photoelectronic touch and, was, and she never before saw pipe so she was not using it at all and it was very very intuitive to, to learn it and to without even going into the Python as a programming language without really learning much basics you can use this kind of tool to for scripting very relatively very easy and that's why it's Certainly, if you learn Python as a programming language, then it's even better. But uh, also, without doing this, you can use it intuitively uh, to, to, to go through. So thanks. OK, so does somebody has uh, some special questions? Yeah, could you come down? And then you, can better, you can better speak to us, and he can show you on the screen. Hello. Uh, Hello. So, uh, thank you for for the presentation. I, I was playing along uh, with the structure building tools. Um, 
And so I saw that uh, there is a repeat uh, method uh, on atoms to create supercells. And then uh, next I was, I was wondering I wa how I would go to create, for example, a substitution or, or a vacancy in, uh, in my atom structures. <coughs> Um, so in one of these terminals, we had some um, things set up, and so um, uh, let's let's do an FCC. That's simple. So in this case, it's 45 gold atoms. Suppose we wanted to um, to change one of those atoms to uh, silver. Um, so this is what it looks like. So here we have atom number 39. Let's turn that into, uh, sorry. Um, The symbols of the atoms are accessible through this object, a special symbols object. And that one can be indexed, where we can write directly to that. We want this to be silver. Now if we ask what are these atoms, well now there is a silver among them. Now we can do view again, and we will see that it has magically turned into silver. So. Uh, likewise, it's possible to delete, so we can delete atom number 40. So now it should have one atom fewer than before. So it had 45 and now it's, its length is 44. There are 44 atoms only now. So we can view it again and we should be able to see that this there is now a hole here instead of an atom. So, um, uh, in general, the the symbols object is relatively new. So back in the back in the days, you had to either use atoms dot numbers, which are the um, um, atomic numbers, or the um, um, uh, get chemical symbols. But that's a lot of typing. So atoms dot symbols is much easier and the nice way to do this simple menu. And of course, it works with, you can do 4 to 10 equals plutonium, and then we get plutonium. So, uh, a relatively handy way of doing that. So that is how you can create vacancies uh, and change um, elements into other elements. Um, another handy there are, there are really a lot of methods um, uh, on the atom subject. So one can try to autocomplete that and you get all of these. Uh, you can set and get dihedrals and distances and angles. Um, um, a handy one also is rattle, which um, the atoms a little bit so the positions now when we view them they will be just a little bit displaced uh, maybe I should rattle them a bit more um, this is nice for for breaking symmetries if you want to to um, or for testing um, uh, relaxations and um, um, So, in general, these are all somehow um, documented on the web page. There is also the symbols object has a formula, formula property which can be used to, um, to um, um, format the, um, or calculate the uh, stoichiometry. It can tell you that it's an AB6C37, that is the stoichiometry of this thing. Um, and this is 
this is a reduced formula. So if there were a thousand uh, and it was div um, um, atoms and it could be divided by something, then it would this would be the reduced formula. Um, um, Yeah, I guess we're back to the point where the most logical thing to do might be to do the actual exercises. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. It's really interesting, your API. Uh, you can also mention that there is a cell object uh, which has a lot of, um, um, of methods also. So one, one thing is that it, it has the same methods as a NumPy array, but also it has, for example, the handedness of the cell. In this case, we only have two vectors, so they don't span a three-dimensional space. Therefore, the handedness is zero. And also, um, it will tell us that the rank of the cell is two. It's a two-dimensional system. Um, um, so this is another object that that can do a lot of fancy things. Um, most of the objects, however, are still ND arrays, NumPy arrays, which makes them a little bit dumb. Um, Ask, thank you. We had a question in a discussion in the chat window. Ah? Could you maybe um, comment on that? Um, let's see. I could try to close all of these. Then I can see the chat. So, so the actual calculation of the potential energy, uh, 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 it happens inside the calculator. So if the calculator is GPOR, then it happens inside GPOR. If the calculator is VASP, then it happens inside VASP. Uh, in the case of the EMT, that one is written in pure Python, and so it happens somewhere inside ASE. Um, ASE does a little bit of normalization, so many of these computational codes work with different units. So ASE makes sure that the energy is all, always EV and the distances are always in angstroms. Uh, so that way there is a common way to talk to different codes. And also we are working on providing um, common ways to set variables such as the k-points. Um, uh, so many codes can accept a k-points keyword that m works more or less the same. Um, uh, in principle, however, the task is infinitely large. So uh, only the most common parameters will really be become universal. And uh, connected to the question, maybe if the atoms object changes after the calculation you did with an external code, does ASE realize that and does the recalculation? The um, yes, update? so this, yeah. also, this is also in one of the um, exercises. Okay. Uh, every time you change the atoms, um, if well, if you call get potential energy twice in a row without moving the atoms around, um, uh, then it will not perform a calculation the second time, only the first time. But then if you change something, then it will uh, detect next time that something has changed. So it will trigger a new calculation. And if you ask for, um, if you ask for another property, not the potential energy, but something that had been calculated already, is uh, ASE aware of what is in the standard calculation? Like, I don't know, forces or... A, or a so the, this... In, in in general, no, but uh, file I.O. calculators tend to read as much as they can and dump it into a dictionary. Okay. So then it can see if, uh, if it has enough data, then, then, uh, then it won't trigger a new calculation. Okay, so that's uh, right. But right. it's a little bit finicky sometimes. Uh, uh, some, um, if you call, for example, get potential energy, and then it doesn't calculate the forces, and then later you calculate the forces, then uh, maybe that needs a new calculation. Uh, but if you call forces before energy, then uh, the energy will be included anyway, most likely. So that can be an issue with some calculators, because since they all behave differently, 
uh, it's difficult to get them to do exactly the right thing all of the time. And also, since calculating the forces could be t time consuming, it is sometimes desirable to only get the energy. So, but uh, another thing that we are working on is a way to, to be more explicit in what information is exported. And uh, so that you can say, I want these three things, and then you get those. So there is not single calls, like get potential energy, but uh, like a call do calculation, energy forces, and so on, and populations or something, and then it will create an input um, file which does all of these calculations. Um, yeah, so f to most codes it would be a single input file where you just specify, please calculate the forces and please also calculate the stress, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so it needs to somehow be able to, to do that. Um, and then um, we have some plans for some new objects that can better express these relationships, um, uh, but it's not, uh, it's not ready yet. So, there is also a question in the chat, I can quickly do that. Yes. So, one of the, um, so these atoms, they consist of all sorts of things now. So we can say, uh, get, uh, actually get initial magnetic moments. So, this, they're, they're all zero because there are no, um, uh, magnetic moments, but let's say that we want them. Uh, then we can say moments, all of them equals one. Then atoms that set initial magnetic moments. So now the string representation of the atoms will say that the initial mom mag moments are set to something without going further into detail. So when we run a calculation with that, the, the calculator can choose to pay attention to what the moments are set to and use that for initialization of the uh, of the electron density. And of course, when they are set, it would be logical to do a spin polarized calculation, whereas if they are not set, it would be logical to do a spin paired calculation. Uh, however, this mechanism is not completely generalized properly across calculators. Also, some calculators don't need them at all. For example, EMT does not care whether the system is, is magnetic. It has no concept of electrons. Um, um, this is another piece of work that we would like to, uh, to generalize this to a more, more expressive API, also for non-collinear spins. Thank you. We have another question uh, locally here. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, so hello. Uh, my question is actually related to how one can set up structures in a certain orientation. Because, for example, by map gain doesn't really have that option. For example, that one has a structure that is where one certain axis is, I don't know, oriented in the one, 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 one direction, for example, in FCC or in a very specific, where one very has specific planes. Is there an easy option to do that in ASC? Um, well, um, that's a good question. I suppose, um, I mean, there are some ways, um, but I don't think there is anything truly <laughs> which um, so, if outside of actually just editing them or multiplying um, the atoms with like a supercell matrix or something like that, yeah. I'm not really sure. Um, uh, there are some handy rotation tools on atoms, like one can rotate them. Um, And uh, so, can I have one moment, please? Okay. So, uh, in this.
this case there are some examples where we can use a, um, a, a name as a helper when we rotate. But I don't think there is anything all that fancy for uh, for transmuting the cell into something like that. Um, it might require a little bit of digging. Did that more or less answer the question? But I'm not also sure what you wanted to do with it. So this means um, maybe I'm missing something. Yeah, I can. So basically, we're setting up certain structures like dislocations, grain boundaries, and things like this, and they require a certain orientation. And for example, if you use PyMath gain, then you really have to do a lot of matrix uh, algebra to get things correctly oriented. I was just thinking if there is an easier way ASC. Well, if it's just about rotating the atoms, then this would do some of those jobs. But uh, um, then um, uh, I suppose, well, I'm not actually sure. It's not a use case I ran into. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Thank you. There is that geometry module that you might want to to look at. It has a lot of things, but I don't know if it has that. Something in the discussion again? Oh no, there is nothing new. So thanks for clarification of the previous question. Yeah, I think one of the advantages of ASE is that it's written in Python and very accessible, so that particular problem could be implemented in ASE by any kind of contributor. So I think you're very open to incorporating things in the code. Is there some certain guidelines to follow, some, some requirements? Uh, when you want to contribute to ASE to have it upstream? So it's a very good idea. Thank you for asking that question, actually. Um, so um, contributions are very much encouraged, uh, but we are also very short of time. So um, um, uh, it's a good idea to get into contact with the developers early on. And um, uh, start with small changes because uh, a common pattern is that is that somebody develops a feature and it is thousands of lines and then suddenly there is a merge request on GitLab with a thousand lines or more and that's really um, time consuming to go through and understand all of it. So uh, we, have, we very much like small contributions that expand things a little bit here and there, like fixing a bug, adding a new format reader maybe, um, or, or some limited but useful feature. Um, uh, but uh, we have to, to avoid adding too big things because the code base becomes very huge and um, uh, it's already a little bit bigger than, than what's comfortable. So the answer to that is to split things into smaller projects. Uh, and there are actually quite a few ASE related projects. Maybe it would be appropriate to look. So there is this ASE ecosystem and we have quite a few extra tools. So these are often a little bit more uh, specialized than, than ASE. Um, um, uh, something about wolf constructions, uh, saddle point searches. There are also two couple cluster codes. Uh, there are quite some nice things. And there is also a, a program that can do crystal reduction. Um, so um, that's definitely worth having a look at as well. And if you're doing a larger project, um, consider making it a, a standalone project on, on GitLab or GitHub or something like that and, and 
added to the to the ecosystem like this. Uh, so the actual process of contributing um, it involves cloning the code from GitLab, and then uh, you create a branch for your changes, and then you hack the code until it works. Make sure that there is a unit test of this new behavior, so we can, so it, it, it there is some kind of proof that it works, some kind of automatic assessment of of, of whether the results are correct, and then um, then we can. Um, and we can have a look at that. Uh, so if we go to the uh, GitLab, we can also see that there is an embarrassingly huge number of, of merge requests actually waiting um, because um, it's impossible to find find time. And um, uh, But things that have tests and is, um, doesn't have a lot of code duplication and other bad habits, they can probably be uh, merged relatively quickly normally if they don't open any cans of worms. I see. Um, I see. Thank you very much, Ask. I think we are also already nearing the end of our session now. So thank you very much for your tutorial and uh, for showing us an improvised version of what we wanted to, what, what we especially need. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's thank Ask again for his time. And I think we will be moving on with uh, our next speaker. Thank you again. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, thanks, Ask. Yeah.